back. We could sell another show during that commercial break. Yeah, I was in there. You just joined us. My guests are Joan Rivers, Adrian Barbo, and Mr. Gabe Kaplan. It's going well, isn't it, for you the past year or so? Everything is going so. terrific. That's I really, good. I really owe a lot to be on this show. You know, every six weeks, everybody watches the show. Mm -hmm. Going into Vegas, you know, right at the dock. Yeah, that's great. Is that your first, uh, my first, first go around in Las I was Vegas? I talking to Doc uh, yeah. behind. He said he went in right after Ed, and it was terrible. He had to get the alligators out of the dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> Do you buy that story? You buy the uh, No, it's nice. It's the first night of Hanukkah. I'm happy. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It is Hanukkah. I heard somebody say that. You know, it's a, it's a, a huge use in the audience. That's right? a happy holiday also, though, isn't it? The Hanukkah. Yeah, the only thing I didn't like about Hanukkah when you're growing up is you don't have a mythological figure to identify with. But I heard that here uh, they've come up with a new Christmas figure. Uh, he's in some of the parades, and his name is Hanukkah Claus. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. Yes, he's just the same as Santa Claus, only he doesn't wear red and white, he wears blue and white. And uh, no elves, he has a short team of trained Jewish tailors. <laughs> and no reindeer. Santa Claus can be seen cutting through the December sky in a black Eldorado. <laughs> and everything in his bag is marked down at 398. <laughs> now, will you get in trouble with people like that? Will they, will they write you and say, uh, now, that, that, that's a put-down and so forth, and uh, ethnic joke. You, you run into any problems with your stuff? No, I never get... Uh, I got one letter, a one bad letter in all the times, and it was about the Ed Sullivan thing. Yeah? Somebody didn't what like didn't that. they like? They just didn't like the fact they're saying for the Jews and for the Negroes. They thought that that was in bad taste. But yeah. I've never gotten any bad mail. In fact, I do that bit about the old people on a dating game in Miami, and when I go to Miami, if I don't do it, they get angry. Yeah, you do a wonderful... Do that bit about the old people. I want to hear that. Let me hear that. That's fine. I want to hear that. Come on. <laughs> That's right. You do a wonderful chunk on that. Somebody said you got something that ties in with Christmas, a piece, a little chunk of material you're going to do? Right. I was watching, you know, all the uh, Christmas shows, and the same ones are on every year, and A Christmas Carol will be starting again, you know. And I could not relate to A Christmas Carol because it wasn't a uh, contemporary story, so I'd like to change it. I hope Dickens will forgive me and do my version of A Christmas Carol. Well, he may never know. Ah, uh, he may never know. All right. <laughs> yeah, your version of the... Uh, yeah. yeah. Tonight, I'd like to tell you the story of a mean, stingy man. He had no holiday spirit. He lived in New York City, and his name was Ebenezer Schwartz. <laughs> Ebenezer Schwartz owned and operated a dirty book and novelty store on Ninth Avenue, where he employed a faithful black worker, Bobby Lee Crotchet. Every year, Bobby Lee wanted a day off. Oh, Mr. Schwartz, can I get a day off? You want off? Off you want! Why don't you straighten out the vibrators? <laughs> And no more having lunch with the inflatable women. <laughs> Schwartz went home, and that night, a strange phenomenon happened. <laughs> Ebenezer Schwartz! <laughs> Ebenezer Schwartz! I don't see you. You're not there. You could be that bad tuna salad I had at Howard Johnson. <laughs> you don't recognize me, Ebenezer. Oh, yeah, you're my old partner, Jacob Schmarley. How do you know it's me? I've been dead for nine years. You still spit when you talk. <laughs> Alive or dead, I'm getting a shower here. <laughs> Ebenezer, you're gonna be visited by two spirits. One at 12 and one at one. Maybe 115, 130. <laughs> Who knows, it's our busy season. <laughs> At 12 o'clock, the first spirit arrived. How you doing, Ebenezer Schwartz? Nice place you got here tonight, you know what I mean? Oh, you think it's easy being a spirit? I'll tell you one thing, you get no respect, no respect at all. <laughs> I gotta show you a few things, Ebenezer. This is you as a little boy, where's your parents? My mother always wore a monocle. One day she was killed by a deranged Mexican who thought she was Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> My father kept saying, I told her, Ruth, trim your sideburns, shave your mustache. <laughs> you don't give anybody any respect, either like your nephew. Why don't you give him a place in your business? Are you kidding? My nephew's a hippie. He came to my house. He tried to smoke my sofa. <laughs> he sniffs Tidy Bowl. <laughs> Last week, he got a little man in a boat caught up his nose. <laughs> At one o'clock, the second spirit arrived. Are you the second spirit? 
Why don't you say something, second spirit? The other one couldn't shut up. Speak, spirit. Where are you taking me? A cemetery. Whose grave is that? They show no respect. Somebody had a picnic there. Empty McDonald's bags all over the place. <laughs> is this my grave? Spirit, I have to know, can the future be changed? Can it be altered? Can you widen the lapels, take in a button, so on? <laughs> Tell me, can you alter? Speak, spirit. What are you hitting me a card? I am a death mute spirit. <laughs> this is how I make a living. <laughs> Ebenezer Schwartz was scared, and from that moment on, he became one of the most charitable men in New York City. <laughs> Now you probably get some letters on that too. I People so. saying you've taken a Christmas Carol and a, well, a great you know, work of art. Well, don't have a sense of humor. Yeah, <laughs> you do. You, you'll have problems, but you do. You do strange, funny things. Thank you very much. And I think when you when you are comedically oriented, your mind does do crazy, crazy and uh, and wild things. I don't and think you, you can. I don't think anybody can please anything. I'm sure Will Rogers or anybody in this time, you know, people. I'm not comparing myself with Will Rogers, yeah. but I'm sure that uh, everybody got letters about things. Yeah, very few things you can comment on nowadays where you won't get you get some mail and people will resent it. Right. So you plunge on, All right, which we will do after this.